Good day, good afternoon, and this is our finished cannabis mac and cheese. Watch here, we can bang this out in 10 minutes if you stick with me. Good evening everybody, David here with Bliss Bites, and I've just pulled out two little packages. As you know, I tend to like decarboxylizing in a little foil package, and back here I've got two pots of water, one of which the butter is melting in. I'm going to go ahead and dump one of the packages into this pot. I'm going to be making one thing here. Another package will go into a jar in this pot. I'm also just testing a little bit to see which one infuses better. We'll see, show you what I'm doing here in a sec. All right, so on the left I've got butter, cannabis, and water. That's going to come to a boil, boil down. I'm going to strain it. On the right, butter, cannabis, and a jar. In a, surrounded by water to keep the temperature down. And essentially they're both just going to steep together, get filtered, and I'm going to go ahead and do some cooking. In this case it'll be with this jar here is what you guys are going to see this time. And that's going to be some mac and cheese we're doing up. It's going to be good. And here at Bliss Bites we're using the old coffee filter once again. I've chosen to do the jar first, which I forgot had a little bit of bacon fat in there as well from the bottom of the pan. Do not let that go to waste. There's a ton of flavor and a lot of you throw out your bacon fat. I wouldn't. Is it the healthiest? Probably not. Is there going to be extra flavor? For sure. So I've got butter, bacon fat, 7 grams of weed. Let's do this. And after it's done, this can firm up. This can hang out on the fridge for a bit. This will be yummy. I'm looking forward to working with this. And I think you guys are going to like the mac and cheese. I hope you do. Keep on. Alright, so I don't know how many of you have had dried chilies before. If you don't have a dried chili, use a pinch of cayenne. If you don't like heat, don't use a pinch of cayenne, don't use a dried chili. But for dried chilies, real quick, you pour boiling water over them, wait about a half hour, and they will be ready to use. So that's my next step here. Oh, here's my water ready to boil. One second here, I'm going to take my lid off my kettle. Trying again. There we go. Just enough there. That's probably too much water in the end, but it'll swim, it'll float, and it will hydrate. In a few, about a half hour, I'll also be making mac and cheese. All right, so I've got my pasta water boiling behind me. So it's going to take about six minutes for soft. And one moment, folks, I'm going to make for this order. Into the noodles. So, in theory, what I can do while that boils in the next six minutes is make a cheese sauce with everybody. So I've got our can of butter that we made last night. Again, there's a little bit of bacon in there too, bacon fat. Start out, pour that in. Oh, nice. So, and then very quickly, I'm going to go in and add my flour. You guys have made a roux before, right? What that is about equal parts flour as well as butter. And that's going to form a little bit of paste. And all we're doing here is really cooking the raw out of the flour. No one really wants to eat a raw piece of flour. There we go. Let's put that in the middle. Great green color you get out of that can of butter too. It's smell the cannabis in it too. Melt the panorac on that cannabis taste because we don't want it all tasting like weed. I've got a chipotle pepper that we saw a second ago, as well as half a shallot that I diced up. And we'll just cook that right in to our base. And again, if you don't like it spicy, don't use the pepper. I would recommend using a little bit of shallot. Other things you can add that add a nice little bit of flavor to this. Great option is Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce. 
And one of my favorites, another little piece of zin. Let's throw some mustard in here. A nice pinch of mustard. Maybe a tablespoon of mustard. I'm using a Dijon mustard myself. Um, if all you have is regular yellow mustard, I couldn't see it hurting anything. Use whatever you have. If you like yellow mustard, if you have a grainy mustard, let's just mix it into this paste. There we go. That's sort of the fun thing about macaroni and cheese. Assuming you have everything sort of prepped, which you can do while the water comes to a boil, it will come together very, very quickly for you. Well, noticing there's a bit more can of butter in my container, so I'm just going to give it a scrape. No point in wasting it, that's for sure. Mix that in. I'm just going to let that fry for another minute. And there. So the last, as much as you, you want to start with cheese, it is the last thing that actually goes in your cheese sauce, strangely enough. If you put your cheese in first, or at the wrong step, it just separates, becomes a mess. Now, ideally you have whole milk. I didn't, I had some whipping cream left. So I'm going to go in and pour some of that into our roux. And then again we just mix it up. What we're trying to do now is just incorporate the cream with the flour, with the peppers, with the shallots. Still smell the cannabis coming off of this. This is actually a great little dish we have going on. And as you can see, I just adjust that a smidge. If you've been following along with this channel, this is actually my first time using the hot plate. Intelligence would say, hey, let's test it out. I'm more for science this, so you're watching my first attempt. There's the rest of the cream there. Out. There we go. Hmm. So now we still are sort of at a base level here. It doesn't want to go down any lower. Let's go ahead and mash the pepper. Freshly ground pepper all through that. If you have white pepper, white pepper's pretty. Black pepper's just fine. And then a pinch of salt. Again, I've got sea salt, use table salt, use whatever you have. There we go. Give that a little mix. Now, something you do want to note, and I forgot to tell you, is try to use warm milk, warm cream. I at least had mine on the counter for a half hour. If I was, I poured it in in two batches, and the reason for that is it just will mix in a lot better for you. Uh, particularly if you add cold milk or cold cream right into the hot pan, it has a tendency to become lumpy on you. Now that's becoming a nice paste. Let's go ahead and add the best ingredient, the best part here. Put a little bit of cheese in. So the pasta's to a boil. There it is. Start adding our cheese. We'll whack the cheese here. So let's set that aside. Let's strain it in. A little more cheese. I'm really thinking I may have crammed too much cheese in here. But can we have too much cheese? Has anyone had too much cheese in anything? I'm guessing not. There it goes. And man, while it doesn't look it, that was grated and sort of compacted back together. A little bit of cheese flying off, not the end of the world. But this does need to be mixed up, doesn't it? Start mixing our cheese into our paste. There it goes. A 
and this will melt down for us. And I'm mixing away. Get a little more liquid. I was thinking we might, because I usually use milk, so I kept the liquid that we were using for the chili peppers. Probably has a little zing to it as well now. Got chili pepper liquid in there. And again, we're back to mixing. Now we're just going to mix and mix and mix, and we will have a cheese sauce in a few minutes. Right in the middle there, you can sort of see it coming together now. And I think with this pan, I'm going to get cool spots around my edge, and the hot spot in the middle is what I'm learning right now, and that's fine. We'll get to know this pan. I think we'll all get to know this pan together as I cook on it. I'll cook for you. Hopefully you give me recipe ideas. I love suggestion guys in the comments. If you're watching one, I love subscribers. I also love comments. Tell me you hated it. Tell me you love it. I'm open to suggestions. Say you made it and it just didn't work for you. I like that. Is Any feedback you can give me would be awesome. There we go. It's amazing that that was just that mess of flour and butter a minute or two ago. I wonder if it's been six minutes. Now that's an interesting question. Get the power on that. That's going to stay warm for a minute. And I'm still with you guys. I'm just checking the noodles. It should have been. If it's got to that far, it's probably been a few minutes. Mm. Noodles are spreading where we want them as well. That's and when you're making pasta, your water should be salty, everybody, like the sea. So generally put in more water than you would expect, because that's what it's going to take. And noodles out. So we've got our noodles done here. I'm just going to scrape a few off the bottom of it. Let's pretend that didn't happen. I also have to sweep a few. Beyond the ones I'm scraping off the bottom of the pot, so will be the ones I've got to sweep off the bottom of the floor, too. There we go. And boom, done. Noodles in. Just scoop from the bottom. Bring the cheese to the noodles, the noodles to the cheese. Now what you can do from here, if you're feeling fancy, why don't you go ahead and put it in the oven? Bake it with breadcrumbs. Why don't you mix in some of that bacon if you had bacon fat? Or if you want to be super fancy, your grocery store might even have a lobster. My God, if it's date night, have cannabis bacon mac and cheese or lobster mac and cheese. And my fuck boy, someone would love you. But hope, there we go. I don't think that would be any easier or any better. Thank you for watching, everybody.